and obedience to be vice chancellor.
we lead to for future of my studentship of this university. Congratulations. Please permit me to call on the commissioner. The commissioner for please permit me to con, con, uh, call on the commissioner for Ministry of Youth and Social Development of Labor State, Honorable Bolaji Abubakri Ogulende, Commissioner. Permission of my vice chancellor. We wanted to take a few.
next up now, how you lay your bed is how you sleep or eat. How many of you are on social media here? is always very important the foundation is everything and this is the foundation that you are laying here it's your first year in university this is your first few months in university how you lay that foundation is what takes you through your three four five years as the case may be depending on your courses so it's very important that you start on a very good note for example by being respectful to your uh to your lecturers be respectful to your lecturers. Be respectful to yourselves. Going to classes on time. Making good use of your time. You know, the interesting thing about it is a lot of us come into university and we think all of a sudden we have this thing called freedom. Yes, you have the freedom. Because your parents are not on your neck. Your lecturers are not necessarily breathing down your neck for you to attend classes and to come for lectures. But guess what? Your destiny is in your hands. It is about you. Your parents have done theirs. Your lecturers have done theirs. I have done mine. It is about you. It is about what you want to become in future. It is about what you are setting the stage for right now. That is what it's about. It's about you as an individual. And guess what? It's becoming very competitive. It is becoming very competitive. How many of us here know somebody that has uh, that went you went to school with that has not been able to get into university how many of you a few of you all of you so it's becoming competitive right so it's not just about going to coming to university and going through your three four years no it's changing your grades matter what do you come out with gone are those days you come out with a tutu and you say you're looking for a job everybody is looking for a job the population on Lagos were, were about approximately 29, 29,458,000 population of Lagos. Out of the population of Lagos, we say the youth constitutes about 60%, which means the youth plus or minus were about 16 million. And all of the youth opportunities, the 8,000 plus of you here, when you, by the time you graduate, you join some that have been in the market already looking for jobs, looking for opportunities. But you see, you have the opportunity to set your own state. That's why, that's why someone like me is here, to have this uh, conversation with you, to prepare you for your future. It's not about going through university and coming out. Come out with good grades. Because guess what? A lot of us here have the same connection. You graduate. You when everybody here graduates, that have you been go in the to market the same, already looking those for jobs, to go looking for into the government or organizations. Either your parents know somebody or uh, you unmarried or whatever the case may be. You all come out. But what makes you different? That is what keeps you separate from the others. That is what gives you that opportunity. What makes you different? And I'll tell you, I'm giving you a little bit of expo. What makes you different? Very simply, it's coming out with good grades. When you come out with good grades, you separate yourself from those who have gotten the first class to those who have gotten a 2-1 and a 2-2 and a pass and a fail, as the case may be. So imagine you have a 2-1 because first class is not easy, right? You have a 2-1. About 2,000 of you have a 2-1 or a first class. That means you are eligible, at least you are top set of the class, right? You have a first class. You are top set of the class. Very good. Now you come into the job market. You are looking for a job. You all apply to the same companies. But what makes you different? You all have the same first class. What makes you different? What makes you different, for example, could be as simple as whilst you are going through university, you took time out of the class, right? Weekend, you have a first class. Days, for example, to get a companies. job. 
But what makes you different? So that on your CV, when that person is going through your CV, you all have the okay, same two thousand. What makes you different? They all have what makes class. you different? For example, I need to be as separate them. Okay, whilst you are going through university, experience. you took time out. I'm going to put them as right. Side. That makes you, you have a different holidays. For example, during the course of the job. This but what makes you different? That has, so that on your CV, when experience. that person is going through your CV, you all have the same. Okay, two thousand. What makes you different? They all have What makes you different? For example, I need to be as separate. Okay, while you are going to university, you took time out. I'm going to put them as right. That makes you have a different holiday. For example, during the course of the another bucket. Whilst this person was in university, this person volunteered community service, has letters of recommendations from various NGOs. You put him in another bucket. What you are doing is you are separating yourself from the norm. You are making yourself a little bit different. You are making yourself a little bit unique. That is what you need to start thinking about. How can I be different from others outside my grades? And it stands you apart and it gives you that opportunity to be able to compete. Am I speaking? So what I'm saying is you need to start thinking about how you're going to make yourself a little bit different so that you become competitive, you stand out, and you give yourself that opportunity. Otherwise, you come into the pool of where everybody is, where majority is, you start looking for a job, you start carrying your CVs up and down, and, you know, it's frustrating, and, you know, and it can be demoralizing. So what I'm saying, in essence, is you need to start preparing your future from now. It's not easy. But if you are deliberate and if you are intentional, then you can start building that future now. Your lecturers are only going to give you what you need to know. But onus is on you. The job is on you to be able to build yourself and take yourself to the next level. Right? Am I speaking? Opportunity meets preparedness. Opportunity meets preparedness. You need to prepare yourself for the opportunities. It is very simple. Yes, I'm standing today as a commissioner of youth and social development in Lagos. I didn't get here by mistake. I didn't get here by luck. I prepared myself. There was a journey. Who went to Atlantic Hall here? Corona school. Okay. I went in my own time. I went to Corona school. And then I went to Atlantic Hall. But I, I'm using this to tell you a little bit of, about myself as well. So you see how I got here. Very simply. I went to Corona School, then I went to Atlantic Hall Secondary School. Uh, when I graduated from Atlantic Hall, uh, I went to uh, UK, Irwin College, to do my A-levels. Um, I did my A-levels in Irwin College. When I finished, I proceeded down to uh, University of Leicester, uh, University of Leicester, and I studied, uh, I graduated with a BA in B, uh, a BA Business Economics. Uh, when I finished my, my undergrad, I came back to Nigeria. I came back to Nigeria to my FYC. I came back to Nigeria to my FYC. One of the best decisions that I made in my life. I came back, I did my NYC. Uh, when I came back to do my NYC, I wasn't sure about what I was going to do next. Um, so I did my NYC, and then I worked for another two and a half years. During that two and a half years, I had to decide. Within, during my and then realized that um, I needed to do a master's, right? I needed to do a master's, but I wasn't sure what I was going to do my master's in. I needed to make a decision. Luckily for me, during my NYC year, I was able to narrow it down to two things. Doing my master's in uh, communications, that was when the extent came to Nigeria, or doing my master's in oil and gas. I ended up deciding to do my master's in oil and gas. So when I finished my NYC and worked for another two years at Venice International Bank, right, uh, I went back to, uh, to the UK to do my master's and I, and I backed an MSc in hydrocarbon enterprise from the University of Scotland in Spain. Hydrocarbon enterprise sounds like big grammar is a lie, is oil and gas management, right? So I did my, 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 I got my MSc in that and then I started working. I worked in the UK for about five, six years. Um, and then after that, I went on to the US. Uh, I worked for another couple of years and then I was brought back to Nigeria by a company called Owando. How many of you know Owando? All right, by a company called Owando. And I was with Owando for about 12 years up until last year. When, yes, you are wondering how, Abi? 
how old am I? And we'll get there. <laughs> and then I came back, uh, I worked with Orlando um, for about 11, 12 years, and then I was opportuned. I was opportuned to be called to service last year, October. Uh, I was appointed as the special advisor to Mr. Governor of Special Duties and Intergovernmental Relations in Lagos State. That was in October. Uh, I did that for about six months. Six turbulent, exciting, crazy months that I needed to show capacity, show accountability, and show that I had what it, what it takes to be able to continue should the administration win. And by the grace of God, the administration won. And in October this year, I was appointed as the Honorable Commissioner for Youth and Social Development in Lagos State. It sounds easy. It sounds nice. It sounds fantastic. You know, it feels good to be, you know, to look young and stand here in front of yourselves to be able to share and say these things. But trust me, there's no shortcut to the top. It takes a lot of discipline. takes a lot of uh, accountability. Uh, takes a lot of, uh, takes the grace of God, right? Um, and, you know, some of these attributes are what you need to start building yourself on, you know, to get to your own. Uh, destination because we all have a journey. We all have where we're going. But you start building it from here. I have been given 10 minutes. I have spoken a lot to some people who have not said anything, but I hope that in everything that I have said, I have been able to you know, pinpoint something you know, that is resonating with you to help you in your pursuit. Discipline, accountability, transparency, integrity, you see, the key word integrity is the only thing that you can take to the bank. Integrity. Your integrity is everything. When you say you're going to do something, you do it. You stand for the truth all the time. I say to people, I'm not afraid to stand alone. I'm not afraid to stand alone because when I look back behind me, I, there's a God behind me. So in everything that I do, I am not afraid to stand alone. And that is one of my driving principles in everything that I do. But you need to be upright. I wish you guys the very best. It's not easy. I've spoken seriously. Let me bring it down now to, you know, to our level, right? It's not easy. It's a couple of years where you are rebuilding yourself, you are reshaping yourself. There's going to be a lot of distractions, a lot of distractions. Like I said earlier on, freedom. You think you have freedom. All of a sudden. But guess what? Time goes very quickly. We are in February already. We are in February. That we don't. We, January, we only have 10, uh, 11 months left before we start saying Happy New Year again. There's no time. But have fun in what you're doing. You know, try and, try and be true to yourself. Try not to fall under pressure. There's going to be a lot of pressure. The babes, the guys are going to toast you. They've started. They've started. It is normal. Some of you are going to find your future partners here. Normal. I, it, it's normal, right? But you see, be deliberate in what you do. Don't put yourself under unnecessary pressure. Your, your, your lecturers are here. If you're having issues and challenges, speak to them. Your parents are there. You have older ones. You have me here. I'm your brother. I'm commissioner of youths. I am the one that is trying to put together all of the youths in Lagos State. Right? My social media is open to everyone. I respond to all messages. My Instagram is Mobola Joe Gulende. Only serious stuff. But you can also follow me just to even see what I'm doing. At Mobola Joe Gulende. That is my personal Instagram and my social media handle. At L-A-S-G-M-Y-S-D. That is our official handle for the Ministry of Youth and Social Development. I will encourage you to follow us because we're doing a lot of things. There'll be a lot of opportunities for you, a lot of things you can key into, skill, uh, skill acquisition, job employment, as the case may be. So try and follow us and just even see things through my own eyes. It would help you on this journey. But like, like I was saying, have fun in what you're doing. There's going to be some pressure. Try not to fall under pressure. The girls, try not to succumb to pressure. The guys try not to also succumb to pressure because there are all sorts of pressures. I don't want to go into it. But if you stay true to yourself and you remain godly, you remain godly. You see, God first in everything that we do. God first in everything that we do. 
If we make, we can, we can continue talking and speaking, you know, as much as we want. But you see, onus is on you to, 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 to carve and charge and design your destiny. But we're here to only give you the moral support, to give you the advice. But we cannot break your head and put it inside. No, we can't. We can't. We won't. Because times have changed. Things have changed. Most of us here are Gen Z, Zabi. Gen Z. Soft life. I cannot come and kill myself. Nothing they happen. Normal. Whilst we are doing the Gen Z thing and all of those things, let us remain focused. And let us stay true to ourselves. And I, I keep saying, God first in everything. Whether you are Muslim, you are Christian, you are traditionalist, whatever it is. God first. God first. I wish you guys the very best in everything that you're doing. I pray that the almighty God continues to guide you, protect you, be with you as you go through this journey. Open your head so you can hear what the teacher, that the lecturers are saying. Open your head so that you can understand and pass your exams. Open your head so that you can pass in flying colors. Am I talking? Who remembers what I studied in university? Come forward, whoever remembers. Yeah, but... What's your name, man? My name is Babalola Ogumola. You studied economics. No. But you tried. Who remembers what I studied? Come forward. Oh, I... My name is, uh, my name is Akinoba, and we studied business economics. Please give her a round of applause. Stay. Stay. No, the rest of she, she got it. Yes, you can sit down, please. What's your name again? What are you studying? History and strategic science. History and strategic studies. Just stay. I did that intentionally, um, and I did it to pass a message, right? One, to see who was paying attention, because this is what you need to do in class. You need to pay attention. You need to try and remember what your lecturers are saying, number one. And then number two, I said something earlier on, preparedness. I said, who remembered what I studied in university to check your attention span? And then also to see who's bold enough to come forward. I saw a gentleman out there. He kept doing this, doing this. You, yes, you should have come. But you see, you are not confident. Right? The worst thing that will happen is you, you won't get it right. But be confident and be able to step up and, you know, take the opportunities. It's about taking those opportunities. And like I said, opportunity means preparedness, right? So I just wanted to demonstrate that, right? So you have a choice, laptop, phone, or my fi Laptop. Please let me give you a laptop. Yeah, hold well on. Should I ask another question? No, I'm going. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable the Honorable Commissioner for Youth and Social Development, Lagos State. Can we give him another hand of applause? Thank you very much. It is my pleasure to invite the Vice Chancellor, Professor Folashade Ogushola, ONFAS, to give an address. I think I have to ask that that laptop should be shared with me. Congratulations. Um, 
I want to thank the Honorable Commissioner. Those were life lessons. It's not about being 100% right. It's about getting up and starting. If you don't start, you can't make it. So you don't have to know all the answers. Don't be afraid of failure. Step up. And as the commissioner said, his media handle asked LASG, that Lagos State Government, YSD, that is Youth and uh, M, M, oh, Ministry, okay, Ministry of Youth and Social, uh, and Social Development, MYSD. So contact him anytime. So the Honorable Commissioner, Mr. Mubolaji Ogunlende, thank you very much for that inspiring talk. The Deputy Vice-Chancellor Development Services, Professor Ayodele Ashenwa. The Deputy Vice-Chancellor Management Sir Services, Professor Lucien Chuku. The Deputy Vice-Chancellor Academics and Research, Professor Bola Obo. The Acting Registrar, Mrs. Olakunle Markinde. The Bursa, Mrs. Olufumilola Adekunle. The University Librarian, Professor Yetunde Zaid. The Provost College of Medicine, Professor David AOK. The deans here present, the directors and heads of departments and units, distinguished, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I want to warmly welcome you all on behalf of the Senate staff and students to the University of Lagos and to the 2023-2024 matriculation ceremony. You are really special. I congratulate you all being amongst the 8,448 8, students admitted out of over 53,000 students that applied to the University of Lagos. Our university is not just another university. It is a university known for excellence, where we breed leaders, men and women of character, because our motto is indeed and in truth. We take that seriously. This matriculation ceremony is the official induction into the university where we nurture your dreams, fa facilitate the acquisition of knowledge and skills and help to build your character. It is not easy and it should not be easy. Ease does not build character. It does not build strength. And it certainly does not breed leaders. However, be rest assured that we will be beside you every step of the way. Should not be as we support easy. you to become independent. Ease does not adults. build character in the university. It does not you will build make strength. lifelong friends. And it is here, as the commissioner also said, that many of you will meet that special person with whom you will spend the rest of your lives. So shine your eyes. And as the Yorubas say, as you are crying, keep your eyes wide open. I recall with nostalgia my own matriculation ceremony which was before you were born, which was over 50 years ago. It was one of the most exciting days of my young life. I was already enjoying the freedom from parents and the boarding house and feeling in total charge of my life. I was free. No one to wake me up in the morning. No one to make sure I ate so I could eat anything. So if I liked, I could wake up and eat ice cream. Nobody said, take some special food. No one forcing me to go to classes, read my books, to tell me where to go or not to go. That was all in my hands. I was in charge. And you all are in charge. And so it should be. 
The university is the halfway house to full adulthood, where you learn to take responsibility for your decisions, your actions, and your inactions in a relatively safe environment. And where we expect and know that you will make mistakes as you experiment with your newfound freedoms, as you learn to create boundaries, this is how much you, I will take, not take. This is the time you can do that without shame. This is where we expect you to make the mistakes. We only pray you do not make the kind of mistakes that there is no solution. But we expect you to make mistakes. We expect you to fail sometimes. Hopefully not your work, but in other things. But, and we help you to know yourselves better, to know who you truly are. And we want to contribute values to becoming who you truly are. But you can be sure we will be there for you. The university has rules and regulations that are to be followed. And they are for your good and for the good of the institution and for the future of the institution. Where there are no rules and no regulations, there is chaos. The university moves, moves forward because there is discipline. Nigeria has 226 million people. 70% of them are youths. That's 158 million. And 38% of them are between the ages of 15 and 30. That's 86 million people. And so that you can just get a sense of that context of how big Nigeria is. This figure of the age 15 to 30 of 86 million is bigger than the total population of many countries. South Africa has only 60 million people. Ghana, 34 million. Ivory Coast, 28 million. Togo, 9 million. United Kingdom, 67 million. Canada, 39 million. Germany is the closest, 83 million. Australia, 26.5 million. And France, 64 million, to say a few. So just to let you know how big Nigeria is, and so when we say they're not doing anything, there's a lot being done. But because we're so many, it does not feel as though we are achieving much. But we are. There's what I call the dilution factor. So I want you to look at your country with pride. Because the things we have achieved with the population that we have, many countries that we are looking at, it's because they're small. It's because they're small, so it feels it. So you can see the impact of a huge population. So, and because this population is so high, that unemployment is also quite high. You're going into a job market, and it also means that we have to start thinking of how we create jobs. It can't be going into the job market, as I said, looking for jobs. So how do you create jobs? How do you, at the end of this stay in University of Lagos, we want you to be job creators, not job makers, because somebody has to solve that problem. Our university is in the forefront of innovation, entrepreneurship, and technology. It is something we do intentionally. If you go around the university, you will find various innovation hubs. And as I said, it's your choice. It's not part of your curriculum, but it's what you do with your free time to distinguish yourselves from the rest, to prepare to be the job owner rather than the job seeker. We have various hubs, both for the science people, the innovation hubs. We have hubs for the creatives. So I'm sure you've heard of the Madhouse you know, the entrepreneurship center where you can learn additional skills. And then we have also created and bought licenses for micro certifications to support you as you go on. We've paid for it. So it's just for you to decide to use it. We have hubs where we teach artificial intelligence, robotics. 
We have hubs where we teach you that are creatives to turn your enterprise and creativity to money. You don't have to spend the whole of the time here just waiting for pocket money. You can actually become business people. Our library has also been repositioned to provide learning experiences. I know many of you have been there. If you haven't, please go there and join the groups. And we're creating more of these kinds of maker spaces that are contemporary and Gen Z compliant, not like me. So I advise you that in the course of your programs, avail yourselves of the Innovation Technology Hub the Entrepreneurship Skills and Development Center, Neat Hub, Madhouse, and many more. And many more are still coming. So my dear students, I urge you to brace up for the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead in your academic endeavors. You will be equipped with the knowledge and resilience that will be crucial to navigate an ever evolving world. We aim to make you fit for purpose for the fourth industrial revolution, which will be your reality. Jim Rohn, an American entrepreneur and author, once said, time is more valuable than money. You can get more money, but you cannot get more time. It is therefore important that you use your time here judiciously. Here at the University of Lagos, we develop thinkers who can challenge the status quo, who make changes. We here develop change makers. And you must contribute your quota to the development of our dear country. This is a time for you to prepare a foundation for your life. Study hard, grow, experience everything that there is to experience. And I am sure that as Mark Twain, an American writer said, 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than the ones that you did. So try and make sure that you visit all these hubs, join clubs, debating societies, and just explore till you find your purpose. So I ask you again, explore, dream, and discover the future is bright. So distinguished ladies and gentlemen, our wonderful students of whom we are already very proud. I welcome you again to the University of Lagos. And I hope that by the time you leave this institution, we will have here disciplined, accountable, transparent men and women of integrity who are not afraid to be different and who will become presidents and captains of industries. They are the kinds of people, you are the kinds of people our country needs. And we are confident that you can become those kind of people. In the meantime, let me put a word of caution. This is a time of social media, of internet, of, you know, where you have the chance and the freedom to put everything that you think about on social media, on the internet. Remember, the internet never forgets. Whatever you put there today, you might be looking for a job later and somebody will Google your name and they will find your ranting. Be careful of ranting because when you rant face to face, that's all. When you rant on the internet, it's there forever. Even when you regret it, it will still be there. I also want to remind you that, as I said, University of Lagos students are the most technologically advanced students in this country. Everything is on the internet. But remember, you must protect your institution. You must protect that certificate you are going to take from here. If you rubbish your institution, what do you do? You rubbish the certificate. And you need that certificate to get jobs, to get other places. So think before you act. The internet, what did I say? Never forgets. To whom much is given, much is expected. For whom there is freedom, there is also responsibility. So I ask you to seize this moment, to start the journey 
to become the very best versions of yourselves. And I wish you an amazing journey. Congratulations. Oh, yes. Okay. On this note, I declare this ceremony closed. Please, the university anthem will be played while the congregation remains standing. Yes, followed by the national anthem. And then the congregation will remain standing while the procession leaves the hall. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. To remain constantly, and members of the Chancellor's Management led by the Vice Chancellor of the Chancellor of the Chancellor of the Chancellor